Hello my gorgeous souls. This is Rochelle and welcome to Awakening to the New World. This video is over an hour long so I am going to add the chapters and the timestamps in which you can jump to any section in the video that you are interested in. I know it's hard to watch a video that's very long but I needed to make this video this long because of the information that I wanted to have all in one place for you. If you are new to my videos then please click on the subscription button and ding that notification bell so you will be notified of all new content that I will be posting. If you are seeing 1111 that is a message from your higher self to your lower self to wake up and to be aware of something that the spirit is trying to tell you. It's easier to stay in the low vibrational circumstances, filling the challenges of going through the awakening. And what about your environment? What are the people that are around you doing? Are they being supportive to you? Or are they being low vibrational and talking about you behind your back or making a joke? or even saying that you are deceived or you're dumb because you believe in something other than the social programming that we have been inundated with all of our life. This video is going to be in two parts. The first part I will introduce you to Dolores Cannon and her book The Three Waves of Volunteers Into the New World. The second part I will be talking about the stages or phases of the awakening and also using certain tarot card definitions in the explanation. So stick around. Do you feel like you're going through a transformation right now? Are you moving to a higher level of consciousness? And hearing the words transformation higher level of consciousness, higher level of awareness, high vibrational energies, low vibrational energies, and also the word resonate. Are you seeing synchronicities in numbers such as 111-777-555-333? You've been asking yourself existential questions. If you have, then this video is for you. There are many challenges that we all face when we first start to awaken, and I will get into that later in the video. We are able to perceive what is equal to the reality that we choose in our life. Is how is your environment and how is that affecting you in your own awakening? Do you, are you embarrassed to talk about your awakening? Do you feel like people are going to put you down? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what people think. It's what you think that matters. And your awakening is your own unique journey. If you are going through an awakening, then you are in for a roller coaster ride. And it is going to shake up your world and change everything. Part 1. The Three Waves of Volunteers and the New Earth. First, I want to introduce you to Dolores Cannon. And her teachings have helped me through all of the challenges of my awakening to this new world. So who is Dolores Cannon? If you haven't heard about Dolores Cannon, Dolores Cannon, who is no longer with us, was a regressive hypnotherapist and psychic researcher who recorded us knowledge. Was born in St. Louis, Missouri. She was nearly 50 years old when she started experimenting with the life regression. She has over 19 books and audiobooks and is well known around the world. Books and audiobooks that give you the knowledge, the hidden knowledge, from the beginning of the world to the age of Aquarius. And she talks about the new world. So I am going to introduce you to Dolores Cannon in her own words. This is chapter one from the three waves of volunteers and the new earth. My research in the field of hypnosis has taken me on unimaginable journeys through time and space. 
to explore the history of the past and the possibilities of the future. When I first began my investigations through past life therapy, I thought I would only find people remembering lives on Earth because, naturally, that was all we knew about. My belief system has really been stretched and extended over the past 40 years. As my work progressed, I was given a great deal of information about the beginning of life on Earth. I was told that this is the time for this knowledge to come forth. We're moving into a new world, a new dimension, where this information will be appreciated and applied. During my work, I have heard much about everything being composed of energy. The shape and form is only determined by the frequency and vibration. Energy never dies. It only changes. I've been told that the Earth is changing its vibration and frequency and preparing to rise into a new dimension. There are countless dimensions surrounding us all the time. We cannot see them because as their vibrations speed up, they are invisible to our eyes. It is important for us to know more about this shift to a new dimension because we are in the middle of it now and its culmination is coming soon. Earth is a school that we attend and learn lessons, but it is not the only school. You have lived on other planets and in other dimensions. You have done many, many things you cannot even imagine. Many of the people I have worked with in the last few years have regressed to lifetimes where they were light beings living in a state of bliss. They had no reason to come into the Earth's density and negativity. They volunteered to come to help mankind and the Earth at this time. I have encountered what I consider to be three waves of these new souls who are living on Earth. They have come at this time because most of those people who have been here for a lifetime after lifetime have become bogged down in karma and are not advancing. They have lost sight of their purpose of living on the Earth. In the early days of my work and... So, are you ready for this information? And if you are going through an awakening, then you are in the right place, and this is the right channel. Remember, you are an enlightened spiritual being living a temporary human experience. And this is forgotten when you come here and incarnate into this world. But as a spirit, you have chosen, you have chosen to come here during this shift as we move into the age of Aquarius. Say to yourself, I am an illuminated, enlightened spiritual being, but I came here to the earth to help the collective raise the vibration of the earth and shift into this new world. Do you believe that? In spirit time. In the spirit, time is fluent. There is no past, present, or future. There is only the now, this moment. Now this is where the age of Aquarius comes in. Depending on what experts you follow, we are either dawning or in the mist of the age of Aquarius. So what does that mean? 2023 is going to be a fantastic year for all of us. So you might be asking yourself, what does it mean to live? What does it mean when I talk about living in the age of Aquarius? The term age of Aquarius refers to the zodiac sign Aquarius. And it is believed to bring an increase in harmony in this world. We are moving out of the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius. Now the energy that we are moving out of is being told what to do and how to do it. Being ruled over. One is the same. No one is connected. 
but you could say there's a lot of people that are just going through the motions, that are just going through all the social programming that they have had all of their life, and really not passionate about anything in their life. That was the age of Pisces. We are moving into the age of Aquarius. Even though it was lower vibrational energy, and also we want to raise our level of consciousness as we're moving into the age of Aquarius. The age of Aquarius is about progressive thought, new ideas, levels of technology. It's new levels of community. It's a new way of being. And this has been seen by many astrologers that the age of Aquarius and in 2023, the time when humanity takes control of the earth and its own destiny. This is the time for the revelation of truth, expansion of consciousness. And a lot of people will experience mental enlightenment. So you are moving out of the third level or dimension of consciousness. Ready to go through all the stages or the phases? This is a disclaimer. Even though I am going to tell you about the six steps or stages of the awakening, it doesn't mean that you are going to go through these stages or phases the exact same way. You may go through one or two of these stages, or you may go through one or two or even three of these stages at the same time. But then you are going through an awakening, and you may be in a different phase or a different step of the awakening. This video may help you to recognize what you are going through, or even all of the, the feelings that you are feeling right now. And I will refer to each stage as a tarot card, and I have been studying the tarot. I am not a tarot card reader, but I have studied the tarot, and I've noticed that a lot of the cards are corresponding with the different stages of awakening. Number one, you wake up. There are two main ways that start your awakening in your life. The first one is through chaos, and what I refer to as a tarot tower card. And the definition of the the energy that you are going through. The tarot card for the tower card energy. If I read the definition of what this card means, and then I tell you about what actually is happening when you are going through this awakening because the first way to awaken is through chaos something really big happens in your life this is what i would call the wake up shake up so the tarot card definition is sudden upheaval bomb unexpected change disaster confusion pain divorce abuse, violence, bankruptcy, natural disasters. I do not like using negative words, so I'm just giving you this as the definition. When your awakening starts, the first way is with chaos. And I refer to that as the tower moment in your life. So something happens in your external environment. Something terrible happens in your external environment that shakes you up and this happened to me I went through an awakening after I lost the love of my life or I thought was the love of my life after the loss of my last relationship a person who I loved deeply so something big and powerful happens in your life and it starts with your external environment. It can be anything. It can be the loss of a loved one. It could be the loss of a relationship. It can be the lo financial loss. It is something, you picture yourself walking and then all of a sudden you didn't realize it and you stepped off a cliff and then that triggers your awakening. The tower strikes it snaps you out of your social programming that you've had since birth and causes chaos in your life. And that is the trigger for you to begin your awakening. The pain triggers a falling out. 
and it feels like your life is falling apart, falling into pieces. Pieces are hitting the ground, all scattered. Here is cracked and fractured. And the ego part of you that has been controlling and running your life ego part of you that has been controlling and running your life loses grip and you start to see the real you over the real you without the ego this happens very quickly so it's very very quick such as an accident divorce trauma loss of a loved one loss of a job and this is something that happens without warning so your ego does not have time to strategize or make plans. This will then flip a switch and turn your soul online. You can picture just flipping that switch and then all of a sudden it's not just your ego, but it's your soul that becomes online. The second way is that you just wake up. You're doing something, you could be sitting, you could be an artist, you could be being creative, you could be listening to music and then all of a sudden you wake up and that will trigger your awakening. It's much nicer to have your awakening triggered by something that doesn't cause you pain and anguish. That is the beginning of your awakening. It would be wonderful for everybody just to wake up without feeling the pain and the anguish and still have that trigger that your soul has actually planted inside of you to awake at a certain time. This is when you start asking as exponential questions such as, who am I? What am I doing? Do I have a purpose? Is there a purpose to my life? Is this all there is? Is this all there is to life? Going very, very deep inside, asking these questions. And you will start to disconnect from the matrix, as most people say. And you're no longer sleeping. You are awake. And then you start looking through a different lens. You start to see things just as they really are. Remember, just because you're awake doesn't mean that your family and your friends are. Because this is unique to you. This is your own unique journey. And becoming awake is for you. Family could still be sleeping. Everyone's journey is unique. Now, this stage could last for, for weeks or months. Stage two. This is a wonderful stage. I call this stage the star, as in the star card tarot. Description of the star. This is the star. If I read the it says, now this is the star card energy. All of the tarot cards are energies. They're not just cards. So I am not a reader myself, but I am learning about the different energies. And I refer to stage two as the star. So the star, you have hope, insp hope, inspiration, creativity, spirituality, healing, positivity, faith, renewal, and rejuvenation. This is such a magnificent stage. When you start becoming awake, your heart ch chakra opens up. Your heart starts opening. As when you go through your awakening, your heart chakra is starting to open up. This is the fourth primary chakra and serves as a center of love for oneself and others, compassion, empathy, and forgiveness. It's also associated with unconditional love, passion, and joy. This is a stage where we start to feel connected to everything and everybody. And this is where I learned about the law of one which is the first law in the law of energy, which I will talk about in another video. So we start to feel connected to everything and everyone. We feel connected, we start to get more connected to the God, divine, source. We feel at one with the source. We can feel connected to the animals, to the trees, to the flowers, to the rocks, to the crystals. 
to the pyramids, to anything. We are feeling connected to everything. We are feeling so good, so good. And we just feel like we are connected to the world. It's a huge connection. But what I have learned is that you don't realize your connection to a person, place, or thing until you actually put your awareness on it. And then you recognize it for what it is. And stage two will help you to be able to connect. Feel these beautiful emotions. Love, happiness, joy. Appreciation, gratitude. Pleasure and excitement. And it is so delightful. Emotions you may not have ever felt in your life. You start to feel these emotions in the stage two which I call the star energy. It's almost like you feel high, excited about life, and you start to love your life. Your heart is starting to awaken. You start to feel the heart energy more and more. And through this stage, I was writing my book. My first book, the fiction book, Project Mars, The Secret Agenda. And that is when I start discovering what I later am calling the algorithm for manifesting a desired outcome. But I will talk about that in another video. Feel good. You feel safe. You're starting to maybe get messages from your spirit guide. You're starting to feel that you're connected. Not just to low vibrational energy. You're starting to feel the 5D higher vibrational energy. Vibrational energy. Be loving, content. This is the greatest time of your life. And your heart comes out front and center. Your heart is awakening and you are feeling beautiful. You are feeling wonderful. Passion. And this is also being grateful, which you don't realize it at the time, but you are tapping into the law of gratitude. This is such an amazing stage to be in. This is the best stage ever. Life is amazing. God is amazing. He is amazing. Everything is just so great in your life. You feel like this is going to last forever. Heart is opening up and you feel wonderful. And you just want this to last forever. Being connected and being in love, really, and being guided, feel guided by the Spirit. You may start hearing messages, or what I call downloads, information that you have that you don't know where you, you heard it. This is the stage where we start noticing the angel numbers, such as 111, 222-555-777-1414-2222. All kinds of synchronicity going on sweet. Basically, you start to tap into the quantum world and you start to realize things that you didn't realize before. And one of the things that you start to realize is that there's always been something that has been trying to get your attention but has not got your attention until now. I went through this stage, I discovered the algorithm for manifesting a desired outcome. And you can watch my video that I made on the top right hand corner of this video. Amazing. God is amazing. Everything is amazing. You may feel this is going to last for the rest of your life. Because you feel so good. You just want to stay in this energy forever. The star energy. The loving, being connected. But your soul has other ideas. And this has been planned before the time that you came to this earth. It's not finished with your awakening yet. Stage three is what I call the Nine of Swords. Person with nine swords above them, sitting in a bed and holding their head in despair. The Nine of Swords is a card of fear, anxiety, terror, negativity, deep unhappiness, stress, burden, regret, remorse. I don't like using these negative words, but this is describing the card. 
This is the hardest phase of your awakening that you are going to go through. Remember, the soul has planned this before you incarnated here on the earth. And what the soul starts doing is it starts pulling up everything to the surface. All of the traumas, the unhealed traumas that you went through in your childhood, or if you went through a divorce, or any type of trauma that you went through that needs healing, the soul starts pulling up. In order for you to be able to cleanse this and heal this trauma. I call this the Nine of Swords, but it's also this spiritual cleanse. The soul is trying to pull everything up in order to release it so that you can cleanse your spirit. Now, another thing to keep in mind, there is a possibility for a lot of people that the soul is also pulling up other traumas from other lifetimes. And if you are watching this video, then you are resonating with this. The soul is pulling up the, these unhealed traumas and what people can refer to as karmic or karmic cycles. Things that the soul has gone through that has created karma and is now bringing it up to the surface to release it. The Nine of Swords is also called the Dark Knight of the Soul in the Tarot deck. This stage is very, very hard to go through. It's easy to say the soul is bringing everything up to the surface to release it, to cleanse your soul. But what is really happening? You need to remember. You need to bring all of the unhealed traumas and do what they call the, the work to try to heal the soul. Especially if the soul is pulling up things that are not of this lifetime. You may have dreams, very vivid dreams and premonitions of other lifetimes. People that you don't know, places that you don't know, but you do, your soul knows it. And this is something that has been planned before you have been born for you to awaken at a certain time and for you to experience all of these phases. But you can be healing things from this lifetime and also from other lifetimes that need to be addressed in this lifetime. And if you are listening to this video, you are resonating with this. If you are hearing this for the first time, your soul is resonating with this. So these things that the soul is bringing up in this lifetime are what has been holding you down. Can also be can, and also be referred to as karma, or I call it the energy of karma and the band of energy as as karmic energy or karmic energy cycles because the goal of your soul is to keep you away from karmic energy cycles. Soul is constantly trying to move you away from the karmic energy cycles that will create that creates dense energy and baggage in your life. This is the reason the soul then triggers the dark night of the soul or what I call the nine of swords. And even though it doesn't feel good at the time, and there might be things that you actually don't even want to think about, but they'll come to the surface. They're coming to the surface for you to be able to release them. So now you are in confusion. You don't know what's happening. You don't feel the connection to the spirit anymore. You don't feel like you're connected. You don't feel the emotions, uh, the higher level of emotions of love and um, and everything is great and everything is beautiful. You're wondering what is happening. You may even feel like you're dying. You might be feeling like you're actually dying. Because why? Because there is something that is dying. And that is your ego. 
anything that you have repressed will start to come to the surface. Normally the ego might tell you, just keep it down there, stuff it down there. You don't need to be authentic. You don't need to speak your truth. Just do something that's easy. Stay in the low vibrational energies because it's easier. If you are going through what I call the Nine of Swords or the Dark Knight of the Soul, remember this is part of your awakening. It is not the end of your awakening. And this is not going to last for the rest of your life. It may last weeks or months. Sometimes it may last years, depending on what your circumstances are. But this is something that is necessary for you, your soul, to go through in your awakening. So if you're feeling depressed or you're feeling confused or you're feeling you, you don't understand or you're feeling that maybe you feel like you're going crazy or you feel like you're schizophrenic or you feel, well, that's a label, I shouldn't use it. You, you, you just are not feeling the same way that you felt in phase two. Remember, this is a stage or phase that you're going through. It is not the end of your awakening. It is part of your awakening. I'd like to say, I am thankful and grateful because when I went through this dark night of the soul or the nine of swords, which was also part of my awakening, I feel very grateful for all of the people who caused me any type of trauma in my life, who disrespected me, or who used me or caused me to create karma or be in a karmic cycle. I feel so grateful for those people because I would not have been triggered into the awakening if it wasn't for that adversity and that those karmic cycles that were put into my life. I needed to go through this in order to connect, in order to release. I had to go through the dark night of the soul, which I call the nine of swords in the tarot deck. I had to go through that in order to release everything and help me to cleanse my spirit so that I could be able to talk to you, to talk to the people who are going through this awakening right now, who are on a path. You may not realize that you're on a path right now, but you are setting on your path and soon you will be discovering what your soul journey is. My soul journey is to help people to awaken and to understand that they are more than just what they think they are. Stage four is what I call the hermit energy or the, from the tarot deck the hermit. This is the hermit and the definition of this energy is soul searching, spiritual enlightenment, self-reflection, introspection, contemplation, inner quality solitude. Now you are tired. You released all that old karma and that old baggage. So now you are really tired. You are so tired from this dark night of the soul that you need to rest. So you might want to stay in your own energy and not be around people a lot. And especially not be around low vibrational people or low vibrational energies. Now you have released the old karma. Feel a little bit of anxiety now. You may feel like the universe has used you up and thrown you out, but that is not true. Now, only now, you have work to do. You need to rest the new energy system and not force things to happen. You feel like when the universe is closing the doors on you, you want to try to force that door open again. You can't do that. So you're not sure what to do. So you remember. I am in this energy right now, which I call the hermit energy, but it's sort of like the great rest energy. And then you learn how to... You, you put yourself in a bubble and you learn how to use the energy 
for meditation. We're going to start doing divine practices, spiritual practices, to keep your soul balanced. You start to learn how to work with this energy that you're in. Actually start feeling deep peace and understanding and going more within. All of, the, all of the old stuff that's been repressing you and keeping you down has been released. And it is no more a burden. You can look in the mirror and you can see your authentic self. The real you is starting to come out and you are starting to come into your power. But you are still in between worlds. The 3D world and the 5D world. And you want to still stand in your power. You start to feel the uniqueness of your soul. And you start to work with this energy and not against it. Stage 5 or phase 5, step 5 is grounding yourself. And I refer to the tarot cards of the Ace of Wands and the Ace of Swords. The Ace of Wands energy. New ideas, new plans, intellectual ability, victory, success, mental clarity, clear thinking, breakthroughs, Ability, ability to concentrate, communication, realization, truth, vision, and focus. The Ace of Wands energy, beginnings, good news, physically starting something new, creative sparks, new initiative, finding new passion, enthusiasm, enthusiasm, urgency, talent, and growth. So these are these two cards that are here. This one and this one. Those two cards. And this is what I, I call this energy for the reason... So what is grounding? Well, if I can use an analogy Grounding is, if you refer to it as a tree, you plant the seed, the tree starts to grow. And as it raises up to the sun, its roots are going deep into the earth. Roots are going deep into the earth and grounding the tree as it grows. And this is what you are doing now. It is a sensation of being bound to a place or a practice a purpose and being a hundred percent present in your body not lost in thought or swept away by any other types of emotion or baggages we feel powerful certain of who you are what you are doing you are starting to stand in your strength you are starting to recognize that you are going through an awakening and life is just not going to be the same. It's having balance, true balance in your life. It's an awareness of feeling safe and knowing that the roots are growing strong into the ground and you are becoming more powerful. It's a time to start to bring your grounded soul back into reality into everyday life it's almost like we're back in stage two but there's a difference now we are grounded we have grown in something new all the time and we are starting to taste our freedom and also our energy is becoming magnetic.
and we are beginning to learn how to manifest. When we were in the hermit energy, the only thing we wanted to do was be alone, or be alone with nature, or go down to the river, or be in our own energy. The difference in being grounded, just like a tree that grows its root deep into the earth, we begin to recognize that we are powerful. Our life is powerful. The energy that we are creating, we become magnetic and start to attract what we want in our life. We become a manifester. Congratulations! If you are on the phase six, and this is what I call the high priestess energy. This is the high priestess. And it's not what people think. The high priestess energy is intuition, inner knowing, self-trust, spiritual knowledge, insight, emotion, stability, divination, esoteric, wisdom, knowledge, things yet to be revealed. This is the most uplifting and wonderful energy that you can be in. Your roots are rooted into the ground. You are very strong. You are very intuitive. You have your spiritual gifts. You know what your spiritual gifts are. You may not know what is your soul mission. You may know bits and pieces of it, but not the whole thing. But everything is starting to come together, just like a puzzle. And now you are making a commitment to yourself. You are showing yourself self-love. You have unconditional love, not only for your friends, your family, but everybody. You are starting to follow your soul's path. Messages from your spirit guides. I call it downloads. You are starting to rely on that inner voice, which is your soul. You are starting to have a communication between yourself and your higher self. You are in communication between yourself and your higher self. You are in communication. You are in connection with God, the divine. So how long is this going to last? This is going to last for the rest of your life. You have gone through all of the steps of the awakening. You are now fully awake. You are now fully aware. And this is where you get the higher level of awareness. And you are recognizing what your soul path or your journey is. As I recognized what my soul path and what my journey was and is. And that is to be able to share the information and knowledge and the wisdom that has been given to me out into the collective, to the people who are looking, to the people who are interested in understanding that they are going through an awareness. Everybody's soul journey is unique. If you have watched this video all the way through, thank you. Thank you for being part of my own soul journey and my purpose of being able to help the collective to bring the level of the awareness of the collective up to trigger awakenings, to help people to wake up. Thank you for being a part of that. 
This video has not been the easiest video for me to make. I am used to sitting on my computer doing step-by-step -step video tutorials in a little box on the bottom left-hand side where people don't even notice me. I am not used to actually speaking the whole time into the camera. But I am thankful and grateful that I am able to do that. I am thankful and grateful that I am able to get this message out because this message is important. Thank you again. Don't forget to subscribe. Click the notification bell so you will be notified of all of the new content that I will be posting. And leave me a comment. Tell me, where are you? Where are you in your awakening? Or have you already gone through the awakening? Are you at the point now where you're starting to manifest? Leave me a comment and tell me where you are so that I can connect to you. Because any type of interaction that you have with this video or my channel is like an energy exchange. And we can connect together. And we can go on this soul journey together. Everybody's soul journey is unique, but as a collective, we can help other people to awaken and go on their soul journey. Thank you for watching this video. Stay safe and have a wonderful evening. See you in the next video.